Mic check. Feels good. Feels good. Feels good. Come on. Yeah, baby. Welcome. To connecting the purple dots. 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 Every hole you open is closed. I told you that before. Mm -hmm. They're listening. They're listening. Every hole you open up is closing now. I just started following uh, dots, connecting pur purple dots. He's very well researched. I like him a lot. In the interest of putting things into proper perspective for the proper understanding of what it is you see before you, we must first correct all of the media narratives out there that are misleading you. The current legal battle in a Delaware court has nothing to do with the Prince estate as per the Carver County Probate Court from August 1st filing, the Prince Estate in Probate Court there was closed and dispersed on August 1st, 2022. This is not an estate battle, but rather a legal battle over Prince Legacy LLC. So let's start off where we left off at in part one. On page 10 of Lundell McMullen's petition to a Delaware court. Let's start with B, distribution of the Prince estate. Paragraph 29. On August 8, 2022, the assets formerly held by the Prince estate were distributed to Prince Legacy and Prince Oates, a separate and unaffiliated company each of whom own a 50% share of such assets. Paragraph 30. Prior to the estate distribution, S&J discussed the formation of a limited liability company extensively with McMillan and Spicer. All of the persons entering into the LLC agreement recognized the need to consolidate SNJ, McMullen, and Spicer's ownership interest in a single entity to ensure that they maintain their 50% ownership interest, preserved independence, and maintained and control over the Prince Estate assets to prevent any other members from selling their interest to Prince Oates or a third party, particularly because such a sale could make the company and its members a minority interest holder in the Prince estate, with little to no say on the business of the company or the management of the Prince estate assets. Paragraph 31. The parties each recognized that the group's interest in the Prince estate assets would be threatened if one of them died or decided to sell their interest. Accordingly, the parties agreed to include stringent requirements for selling any interest in the company, including a requirement that any proposed sale of a member's interest would require unanimous consent of all members. Paragraph 32. SNJ, McMullen, and Spicer discussed a management structure wherein contained members would be appointed as managing members who are responsible for managing the affairs and business activities of the company. Paragraph 33. During these discussions, despite her prior assignment of management authority to McMullen and Spicer, Sharon proposed that she would be appointed as sole managing member. Sharon's proposal was rejected by the other heirs and owners. Sharon then proposed that she should be appointed co-managing member. This proposal was also rejected by the other heirs and owners. With no support for her own appointment as a managing member, Sharon reaffirmed her prior agreement and insisted that Spicer would be appointed 
as a co-managing member with McMullen for the company. Paragraph 34. S&J, McMullen, and Spicer agreed that based on their investment, experience, and expertise, McMullen and Spicer should manage Prince Legacy and its business affairs and should serve as the sole managing members of the company, consistent with the party's agreement to appoint McMullen and Spicer as managers of their interest in the expectancy agreement. Paragraph 35. S&J expressed concern about the Prince Estate assets being under the majority control of one company due to Prince's world-renowned legacy of independence. In addition, S&J wanted to have more input and control over receipt of the Prince Estate's distributions and made numerous efforts to ensure such input and control. Paragraph 36. In preparation for the distribution of the estate assets by order dated February 8, 2022, the probate court directed SNJ, McMillan, and Spicer on the one hand and Primary Wave on the other hand, each of whom owned an equal share of the Prince estate assets, to each form a separate holding company that each interested party interest be assigned to the holding company and further ordered that these companies enter into an agreement to jointly manage the distributed assets. Paragraph 37. In its reasoning, the court acknowledged that it would be inequitable and likely detrimental for one heir to withhold their assent to business opportunities that bind the other heirs or diminish the value of the estate assets as such the probate court ordered the management structure described in paragraph 34 supra be in place before distribution of the iconic assets of the prince estate paragraph 38 in compliance with the probate court order on July 25, 2022, Prince Legacy, a Delaware limited liability company, was formed with Sharon, Noreen, and the trust as non-managing members and McMullen and Spicer as managing members. Prince Legacy was to be a unified voice for the heirs and friends of Prince who retained an interest in Prince's estate including for the beneficiaries of the trust. Paragraph 39. In compliance with the probate court order, primary wave formed Prince Oates Holdings. Paragraph 40. At the probate court's direction, Prince Legacy and Prince Oates entered into a joint management agreement, a joint management agreement. A joint management agreement designated McMullen and Spicer as management representatives on behalf of Prince Legacy and two members of Prince Oates as management representatives on behalf of Prince Oates in order to jointly manage the Prince estate assets. All business and legal decisions regarding these assets must be approved by both entities. Paragraph 41. Since the Prince Estate assets were distributed in August 2022, the McMullen and Spicer have worked collaboratively with Prince Oates to consistently achieve successful results on behalf of Prince Legacy. These successful results include the favorable renegotiation of licenses for Prince's musical performance and music publishing administration rights and planning and hosting a successful and well-attended Celebration 2023 at Paisley Park. In addition, McMullen and Spicer oversaw the release of the Diamonds and Pearls Super Deluxe Reissue box set, which received uniformly positive reviews, several year-end awards, and top rankings in industry publications. As a result, 2023 was one of the largest revenue generating years for the Prince Estate assets in the past seven years. Section C, the Prince Legacy LLC Operating Agreement, Paragraph 42. 
in its formation and consistent with the probate court's directive and all interested parties' wishes, and the expectancy agreement's assignment of the management authority to McMillan and Spicer, the LLC agreement vested management in McMullen and Spicer as managing members. Under Section 6.1 of the LLC agreement, the members hereby appoint McMullen and Spicer as managing members. Paragraph 43. The LLC agreement vests broad management authority in the managing member in Section 6.2, the LLC agreement sets forth the powers and authority of the managing members as follows. The managing member shall be responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the company's business and affairs. The managing members shall coordinate meetings, conference calls, and communicate as reasonably required subject to a meeting once every other meeting with respect to contractual and legal matters handled by the managing members McMullen shall provide and make the final decision on such business and legal matters specifically except as otherwise limited in this agreement the managing members are authorized to own hold manage administer operate lease sell exchange pledge encumber transfer purchase grant options related to and otherwise deal with the company's assets in delaware or any other state on behalf of the companies except as otherwise provided in section 6.3 hereunder. paragraph 44 Consistent with vesting authority in the managing members, Section 6.5 of the LLC agreement expressly excludes the non-managing members from participation in the control of the company and states that such persons shall have no right or authority to act for or to bind the company. Specifically, Section 6.5 provides that a member who is not a managing member shall not participate in the control of the company's affairs and shall have no right or authority to act for or to bind the company. Additionally, Section 6.5 provides that the members hereby consent to the exercise by the managing members of the powers conferred by this agreement. Paragraph 45. The LLC agreement reserves certain minority protections for the non-managing members by limiting the managing members' authority under Section 6.3. Section 6.3 of the LLC agreement titled Limitations on Authority of Managing Members lists a number of actions that the managing members cannot take without approval of the members holding the requisite percentage interest. Section 6.3 provides approval rights to the members over the managing members' authority to take certain actions but does not in any manner authorize the non-managing members to take those actions without the consent or approval of the managing members. Section 6.3 identifies 28 enumerated actions over which the members have rights of consent and approval. Paragraph 46, Section 6.3 states that notwithstanding the provisions of Section 6.2 above, the consent of at least redacted of the percentage interest then held by the members shall be required to do any of the following and list 19 actions which require the members consent in order to implement by the managing members. Paragraph 47. Section 6.3 of the LLC agreement does not authorize the non-managing members to unilaterally amend the LLC agreement, but rather it grants them the right to consent 
to or reject amendments proposed by the managing members to read section 6.3 as granting rights to the non-managing members would turn the LLC agreement on its head and be inconsistent with section 6.5 of the LLC agreement and overall management structure. For example, one of the items listed in section 6.3 is to acquire any material assets of a third party for more than $50,000 and it would be inconsistent with section 6.2 and section 6.5 to allow the non-managing members to unilaterally take such actions. Paragraph 48. In the same manner, section 6.3A19 with respect to amendments to the LLC agreement does not vest the non-managing members with amendment authority. Paragraph 49. Under the terms of the LLC agreement, the managing members may only amend the LLC agreement with the consent of the members and such amendments must be in writing. Paragraph 50. Consistent with the spirit of the LLC agreement, the LLC agreement expressly sets forth specific and limited situations in which the managing members may be removed. Section 6.2 set forth the required grounds for removal of the managing members. Section 6.2 provides that in the event any managing member fails to be able to perform his responsibilities or fail to provide day-to-day -day management of the company, such managing members can be removed and or replaced by the vote of the members subject to the remaining managing members mutual consent. Paragraph 51. Under the LLC agreement, there are only two circumstances under which a managing member can be replaced. One, where he fails to be able to perform his responsibilities or two, where he fails to provide day-to-day -day management. Additionally and importantly, even where one or more of these circumstances are present, a managing member may only be removed with the consent of the other managing members and the affirmative vote of the members. Paragraph 52. There exists no basis for removal or replacement of either McMullen or Spicer under section 6.2, nor have the individual defendants alleged any grounds for such removal, much less a failure to perform the managing member's responsibilities or failure to provide day-to-day -day management as is required under Section 6.2. At all relevant times, McMullen and Spicer have performed their responsibilities under the LLC agreement and have provided comprehensive daily management of Prince Legacy's numerous and complicated business and legal affairs, including the management of numerous concurrent and successful transactions in various sectors of the entertainment industry, the global maintenance and enforcement of Prince's intellectual property rights, and overseeing the management and operation of the Paisley Park Museum and event space. Paragraph 53. The individual defendants have never alleged that either McMullen or Spicer have failed to perform their responsibilities or day-to-day -day management of the business of Prince Legacy, nor have the individual defendants raised at a member meeting or otherwise any major issues concerning the actions of McMullen and Spicer in managing the business and affairs of Prince Legacy. Paragraph 54. Section 7.1 entitled Transfer of Interest of Member 
provides that each member hereby covenants and agrees that he will not and shall not be able to sell, assign, transfer, mortgage, pledge, encumber, hypothecate, or otherwise dispose of all or any part of his interest in the company without first having obtained the written consent of 100% of the percentage interest then held by the members. Paragraph 55, Section 7.1a requires that a member seeking to transfer his or her interest must first offer it to the company at a mutually agreed price or a price determined to be close or equal to the fair market value of the interest. If any member should desire to transfer or otherwise dispose of all or any part of such member's interest in the company, such member shall first submit to the company a written offer to sell all or part of such interest to the company. Paragraph 56, Section 7.1b requires that if the company does not purchase the entire interest, the interest or any remainder must then be offered to all other members. Paragraph 57. Even if neither the company nor any of the members offer to purchase the interest or part of it under Section 7.1c, the transferring member shall not have the right to transfer or otherwise dispose of such member's interest to a third party unless such members has attained the written consent of 100% of the percentage interest then held by the members. Paragraph 58. The restrictions in section 7.1 were thoroughly discussed amongst the members, largely at the urging of Sharon and agreed to by each to restrict the sale of the company's interest without unanimous consent of the members in order to protect the company from a situation where its ability to control and co-manage the Prince estate assets could be lost or compromised by the sale of a single member's interest to a third party. Paragraph 59. In summary, the LLC agreement can only be amended by an amendment proposed by the managing members and approved by the members holding the requisite position interest in the company. Alternatively, if the LLC agreement is determined to have failed to provide an affirmative right to amend the LLC agreement then under Section 18-302F of the Delaware Limited Liability Company Act, the consent of all members is required to amend the LLC agreement. All right, everyone, and there you have it, the end of part two of a legal battle over Prince Legacy LLC. Stay tuned for part three, coming soon.